Good evening. From stories across the world to the stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast, bringing you your top stories for tonight. I am Lakshita Idrisingh. And I'm Ashai Nali. Let's have a look at the headlines first. President reiterates on the importance of religious coexistence on economic development. Solutions to the problems of northern businessmen within the next two months. An automated face identification system for the Katunayake International Airport to assist in the drug control program. Provision of the supplementary dose of measles begins. 5,000 patients die annually due to failure to find transplant organs. A 450 million rupee new postal administrative complex for the eastern province. A new political alliance under the leadership of Diasiri. A Ukraine attack on Russia kills 25 persons and injures 100 more. What are those and other stories in detail? Now, President Ranil Vikramasinghe reiterates that religious coexistence is extremely important for economic development. And he also points out that religious leaders could play a crucial role for the expediting of the development program aimed at returning of incomes to North. And this is described as a result of the war in the North. The president was expressing opinion at a discussion with all religious leaders in the Northern province today. The meeting was conducted on the sidelines of President Ranil Vikramasinghe's four-day official tour in the Northern province. President Ranil Vikramasinghe has announced that comprehensive solutions will be offered to address the challenges encountered by businessmen in the Northern province within the next two months. He highlighted that officials from relevant ministries will visit the northern province within the next two weeks to assess the situation with plans to establish a dynamic agency dedicated to resolving issues faced by the business community in the province. President Ranil Vikram Singh underscored the significance of religious harmony for economic development. He expressed his intentions to expedite the development program aimed at restoring revenues lost during the war in the north back to the region, highlighting the substantial role that religious leaders can play. President Vikram Singh made these remarks during a meeting with all religious leaders of the northern province at the Jaffna District Secretariat this morning. The President has outlined plans to address challenges faced by temples and churches within the northern province under the purview of the security forces. Concrete steps will be taken to restore these religious sites during the period. Additionally, President Ryan Vikram Singh expressed the possibility of constructing a larger temple than Nallur Temple if desired by all religious leaders and guardians associated with Nallur Temple. Furthermore, President Vikram Singh affirmed his commitment to addressing issues within Christian churches with a particular focus on promptly resolving challenges encountered by the Madhu Church. The President noted that Muslims had vacated the areas during the war and efforts have been undertaken to facilitate their resettlement. The unity beyond racial and religious divides, President Vikram Singh urged the country to progress by safeguarding the rights of all individuals. The President underscored the necessity for politicians and religious leaders to dedicate themselves to preserving religious harmony in the northern province. He directed the governor of the northern province to engage with religious leaders and provide feedback on the government's actions for the promotion of religious unity in the north. Religious leaders acknowledging President Ranil Vikram Singh's efforts to safeguard the religious rights of northern province, residents and promote development expressed gratitude for his consent visits to address the community's needs. Furthermore, these religious leaders expressed their blessings for the President's program aimed at advancing the country through the promotion of religious harmony. The Jaffna Interreligious Council President set a proposal to President Ranil Vikram Singh during the interaction. Subsequently, 
President Ranil Vikram Singh toured the Punarin Fort. Additionally, he visited the Wani Kashu Production Company, a high-quality establishment in the Punarin area. Observing its operations, the president highlighted that the industrial company managed by a young woman with a background in mechanical engineering has generated employment opportunities for many youths affected by the war. The company operates with cutting-edge technology and notably all machinery involved in cash processing. From shelling to the final product has been developed by the woman in charge. Acknowledging the significant contribution of this enterprise to the national economy, President Vikram Singh praised it as a commendable example for other young individuals in the country. In the meantime, for the first time in Sri Lanka, an automated face identification system was declared open at the Katunayaka Bandaranaike International Airport today. It comes under the administration of the Department of Criminal Investigation. The Yukti operation commenced under a concept of acting IGP Deshabandhu Tennakon on the instructions of the Minister of Public Security, Tira Analis, is continuously engaged in the apprehending of drug racketeering and organized criminals. The automated face identification system has been introduced as a pilot project. The network includes information based upon the database maintained by the Criminal Reports Division. On organized gangsters and drug racketeers, the pilot program's main objective is to apprehend underworld leaders operating from the overseas and to prevent such criminals entering the country using false documentation and to organize crimes by hiding inside the country. The automated system is capable of identifying any suspect arriving disguised or in an irregular manner. Minister of Public Security Tiranala said that his main objective is to rescue the entire nation, including our sons and daughters, from this menace. The minister added that he would not hesitate to take any stern decision. He further said that they are having obstructions from certain individuals, but they carry out their duties disregarding such challenges. Meanwhile, the police has been successful in recovering more narcotics of different types in large quantities in operations carried throughout the island yesterday. 1,133 suspects have been arrested in raids conducted yesterday. Stock of medicinal pills sold without medical recommendations have been found from pharmaceutical sales centers in the Minuangod and Siduwa Police Divisions. The police says 1,600 such pills were recovered from one pharmacy and 800 more pills from two other sales centers. Managers of these pharmaceutical centers have been taken into custody. An operation to search buses arriving and leaving Colombo has been conducted at the Maligavatta Police Division in Colombo Central yesterday. One suspect has been nabbed in the search operation. The Kalutura South Police Station has arrested a suspect identified by the pseudonym Burula Santa, who is alleged to have been connected to several robberies yesterday. Cash amounting to 7 million rupees and a motorcycle found in his possession were also taken into police custody. The suspect is a resident of Thebuana in Kalutura. Interrogations conducted on the suspect have revealed the hiding of jewellery items of 25 gold pounds in a shrubland near a house. In another inspection conducted at the Siambalapi Junction in Biagama, two suspects connected to drug racketeering have been arrested. The residents of Malwana, the police says 32 grams of heroin and nine live bullets have been recovered from one of the suspects. Similar long-distance bus service inspection was carried out at the Ridibediela roadblock in the Anuradhapura Padaniya road yesterday. On this occasion, a set of apparatus believed to be a scanner was found in a travel bag without an owner. In a police search operation near the Galpote Aya Junction in mid the near suspect transporting explosives was arrested. Upon inspection of the cab of the suspect, six sacks containing 25 kilograms of ammonia, 10 rounds of thread, 120 jerry knives, five boxes each packed with 100 detonators and 400,000 rupees of cash have been recovered. Eight suspects have also been arrested during the operation. Searching of long-distance buses entering the central province has taken place near the Captain Dawson Tower. The operation was conducted by the Kadugan Nava Police Station. 
And in the meantime, a national program of inoculation of a supplementary dose control the measles disease was conducted today. And infants of the ages between 6 and 9 months were given the supplementary dose today. In parallel to the provision of supplementary dose on measles program, the clinics conducted in the Colombo Municipal Council limits have been subjected to the monitoring of the Secretary of Health. The measles inoculation program is also being conducted in nine selected districts including Colombo and Gampaha. Steps have also been taken to provide the additional dose of measles for children who have not yet received the measles vaccine, which is being provided to those between the ages of 9 months and 15 years at the normal clinical centers throughout the island. Secretary to the Ministry of Health consultant physician Palita Mahipala says that Sri Lanka's inoculation program has been acclaimed by the world as a program confirming to optimum international standards. Consultant physician Palita Mahipala said that Sri Lanka is a country which had received the WHO guarantee on the elimination of the measles disease in the year 2019. Yet, he added that the island has reported the occurrence of around 740 measles patients since May of 2023. Provision of the supplementary dose on measles to babies between 6 and 9 months has got underway from the Gampaha district today. The inoculation program is being conducted in 165 medical offices of health offices. Preparations are underway to provide the supplementary dose to around 5,000 children. Provide provision of the measles vaccine to children in Kalatura district. Meanwhile, the Government Medical Officers Association says that it is regrettable to find the recurrence of measles patients in the island four years after the year 2019. Secretary of the GMOA, Dr. Harita Alutke, said that they had witnessed how a COVID vaccine had led to the creation in an organization manner of a devil. A program was carried out to the effect that there was no need for inoculation and natural protection was necessary. However, those who spare had such a campaign are not to be seen today. Parents who were scared of measles inoculation did not allow their children to be vaccinated. The ultimate result has been the country facing another tragedy. False religious beliefs among certain groups in the society had also assisted in the re-emergence of the disease. The infectious disease unit estimates that there are nearly 7,500 children who should have been inoculated with the measles vaccine. UNICEF and the World Health Organization are supporting the phase one of the supplementary immunization activity implemented by the Ministry of Health. It was implemented to curb the spread of measles and protect vulnerable children across the country. UNICEF representative in Sri Lanka, Christian Skook, visited the Jaila MOH office to observe the supplementary immunization activity. She said UNICEF as well as WHO has been closely associated partners with the Ministry of Health for many years in the implementation of the National Immunization Program, which is a success story in Sri Lanka. I'm pleased to be here in the Yaela MOH Central Clinic this morning um, to see the launch of the measles uh, supplementary activity um, to, to, uh, to combat the outbreak that Sri Lanka is facing. Since May, the country has seen about 700 cases, all mild, um, and, and, the, and the, the, the focus is now on nine districts with the highest population concentration and with the highest number of cases that we've seen over the past uh, number of months. Um, six to nine months old babies are being vaccinated in this one and, and then there will be other activities later on reaching other population groups. UNICEF has um, been a proud partner of the Sri Lanka immunization program for many, many years, uh, decades. Um, and it, it, uh, we're pleased that it is one of the most successful in the world. Highest coverage rates, uh, effective when there is a supplementary activity or a campaign. Um, we have uh, recently, uh, post-COVID um, and, and the economic crisis uh, in Sri Lanka, made sure that the cold chain, is, that high quality vaccines uh, get into the, into the bodies of, of the child. So we're here uh, supporting this activity, 
hoping and, and trusting that it will be a success and make sure that every child is protected against measles and can grow up as a healthy boy or girl um, and thrive in, in, in his or her life. In more local stories, the newly constructed postal administrative complex in the Batiklo town was vested with the people at a ceremony presided over by Minister Dr. Bandula Gunavardhana today. The aim of the project is to further expand postal services in the eastern province at a cost of more than 450 million rupees. The complex is comprised of several divisions including the Office of the Deputy Postmaster General in the East, Regional Postal Authority Office, District Controller's Office and Postal Training Institutes. State Ministers Shanta Bandara, Sivanese Ture Chandrakantan, S. Vialendran, Secretary to the Ministry of Mass Media, Anusha Palpita, and the Postmaster General Ruan Satkumara were present. Minister of Transport, Highways and Mass Media Dr. Bandulu Gunavardhana said that the project has become a practical reality at a time when funds are not being approved for building constructions upon consideration of the importance of such an institution in the eastern region. A new beginning in development has been unleashed in the year with commencement of the road construction and provision of finances. Meanwhile, Director of the Peradariya Teaching Hospital, Dr. Arjuna Tilakaratna, says that around 5,000 patients annually die due to inability to find relevant organs to be recommended by the physicians to be transplanted on them. And he further points out that despite the fact that around 2,000 brain-dead persons from whom organs could be obtained die annually and it has not become possible to recover the relevant organs from such patients. A program was conducted at the Peradeniya Teaching Hospital recently under the title Saving a Life Through Another Life. The objective of the program has been to enlighten on the possibility of transplanting body organs of a deaf person to a living person. Although organ transplanting facilities prevailed in local hospitals, the biggest problem faced by the doctors is to find the relevant organs. It has also been disclosed at a session that the possibility of obtaining organs from a person whose brain is dead to be transplanted on another patient is relied upon receiving permission from the closest relative of the dead patient. With that we move into a short break. Stay tuned with us for more local news items. Welcome back as we take a look at more local news items. President Ranil Vikram Singh has announced that comprehensive solutions will be offered to address the challenges encountered by businessmen in the northern province within the next two months. President Vikram Singh made these remarks during a discussion held today at the Jaffna District Secretariat, engaging with industrialists, fishermen and farmers of the Jaffna District. Approximately 300 representatives from the industrial fishing and farming sectors in the northern province are actively engaged and proposed new ideas related to their respective industries to President Ranil Vikram Singh. President Vikram Singh attentively addressing the concerns raised promptly initiated actions to provide solutions to certain issues. The President highlighted that officials from relevant ministries will visit the northern province within the next two weeks to assess the situation. They will come up with plans to establish a dynamic agency dedicated to resolving issues faced by the business community in the province. Notably, the industrialists have appealed to the President for the establishment of an industrial zone in the northern province. In response, the President has directed officials to explore suitable land areas for this purpose. Additionally, President Ranil Vikram Singh has directed officials to expedite the establishment of a provincial business promotion center in the northern province. Acknowledging the crucial role of business development in the province's active contribution to the national economy, the President has instructed officials to swiftly address the challenges hindering this progress. During this occasion, Fisheries Minister Mr. Douglas Devananda and others were also present. Moving on to Salon Electricity Board, Minister Karchana Vijay Segura has forwarded a letter to the Chairman of the Salon Electricity Board over minimizing expenditure at the board. And the minister had stated that the letter is further to the letter on annual bonus payments and incentives provided sent by him earlier. 
The minister has pointed out that he has received information pertaining to a disparity between the interest rates on the private credit schemes and the interest rates levied on the workers and the interest rates imposed on the electricity board banks or other institutions. The minister has ordered to hand him over a detailed report on the expenditures borne by the CEB on each year since the implementation of the credit schemes. The minister further says that in the background of the recruitment of employees, he has come to know of conducting interviews based on father-son relationship. The minister in his letter has stressed that an employee should not be recruited without receiving full permission from the ministry. In further stories, Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Ruan Vijaywardena, says a group of opposition parliamentarians are expected to support if President Ranil Vikramasinghe contests for the forthcoming presidential election. He has made these remarks to the media after meeting members of the Biagama electorate. Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Ruan Vijaywardena, said that only President Ranil Vikramasinghe is able to handle the economic situation and resolve all problems. At this moment, all parties must think of the country and work as one group in order to resolve the economic problems of the innocent people. The deputy UNP leader further said that if we are able to withstand the difficult times, we would be able to achieve massive development later on. That's it on Local Stories. Stay tuned for news from OCS coming your way after this short break. Back off the break and for news away from home, we have Russia has started moving some residents from the city of Belgorod following deadly attacks by Ukraine. Authorities said that several families had left the city, which is close to Ukraine's border. Last weekend, 25 people were killed and more than 100 were injured in one of the deadliest attacks on Russia since the war commenced in February 2022. The attack followed a recent huge wave of Russian strikes on Ukraine, which killed dozens and injured over 160. Those strikes were described by Kiev as Russia's biggest missile bombardment of the war so far. Four people have been killed and at least 42 were injured after two commuter trains collided in Indonesia's West Java province. It was reported that the accident happened yesterday when a long-distance train from the country's second-largest city, Surabaya, collided with a commuter train near Bandung, the provincial capital. The front carriages of both trains were mangled wrecks while others further back had derailed and overturned on a stretch of tracks cutting through rice fields. A total of 478 passengers were on board the trains. The four fatalities were train staff, the driver and his assistant on the commuter train, and a steward and a security guard on the express train. Two of them were killed after being squeezed between carriages. All the passengers were evacuated and those injured were taken to local hospitals. Moving from, on from Indonesia to Alaska, we have a passenger plane that has been lost a section of its fuselage in mid-air, forcing it to make an emergency landing in the U.S. state of Oregon. The Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 9 turned back 35 minutes into its flight to California after an outer section, including a window, fell off on yesterday. All 177 passengers and crew were on board and it landed safely in Portland. The airline said it would temporarily ground all 65 of its 737 MAX 9 aircraft to conduct inspections. Boeing said it was aware of the incident and was working to gather more information. The U.S. Supreme Court says it will hear a historic case to determine whether Donald Trump can run for presidency. The justices agreed to take up former U.S. President Trump's appeal against a decision by Colorado to remove him from the 2024 ballot in that state. The case will be heard, held in, heard in February and the ruling will apply nation King to disqualify Trump, arguing that he engaged in insurrection during the U.S. Capitol riot three years ago. The legal challenges hinge on whether a Civil War era constitutional amendment renders Trump ineligible to stand as a candidate. And 
to conclude foreign news, India's first solar observation mission has reached its final destination. Today, Aditya One has reached the spot in space from where it will be able to continuously watch the sun. The spacecraft has been travelling towards the sun for four months since liftoff on 2nd September 2023. Space agency ISRO launched it just days after India made history by becoming the first to land near the moon's south pole. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the mission was a landmark and an extraordinary feat. A quick look at the sports news before we wind up for tonight. Sri Lanka cricketer Charita Salanka was able to score his third century in one-day cricket in the first match in the one-day current series against Zimbabwe today. The Sri Lanka team, having won the toss at the R. Premadasa Stadium in Colombo today, decided to bat first. Janet Lienage has received one-day status. Avishka Mendes and Captain Kusal Mendes have opened the innings but failed to add a run to the Sri Lankan innings. It was Sudhira Samaravikrama with 41 and Kusal Mendes with 46 runs to put the team into some respectability. In addition, Asalanka has scored 101 runs facing 95 deliveries, which included five boundaries and four sixes. The Sri Lanka innings was restricted to 273 runs for the loss of 9 wickets in 50 overs. When the play was interrupted due to rain, the Zimbabwe team were at 12 runs for the loss of 2 wickets in 4 overs. Meanwhile, the Dialogue Asiata company has been appointed as the official sponsor of the Sri Lanka cricket team. The relevant agreement has been signed recently. The aim has been to promote the sport of cricket under national and international levels. Minister Harin Fernando has presided over the signing of the agreement at the auditorium of the Ministry of Tourism. And with that, we wrap up tonight's news bulletin. Do join us tomorrow for more of the very latest. Until then, good night.